As Apple fans are eagerly awaiting Tim Cook to get back on stage and announce new products like the 27-inch iMac and the Mac Mini, we just got confirmation on three specific Apple products that are getting ready to launch and ship very soon here. Two of them we anticipated, but there is one product that makes absolutely no sense, at least initially, and in this video we will cover what that is and why Apple would be replacing it so early. This info comes from the Eurasian Economic Commission data database filings pointing to three products being imported into India and getting prepped to launch soon. Now this has me really excited for the possibilities because as you've probably seen lately we've been getting disappointment after disappointment with many new product release dates getting delayed. But at the same time some people are going to be really confused and upset if the device that they just bought is getting replaced. But I will explain why it makes sense and how these products will fit together and Apple's lineup. The first of these three is, of course, the new iPhone SE 3. We've been looking forward to this phone for the past few months because everybody has been expecting it to finally be updated and drop the old design, finally getting rid of the home button while either adding Face ID or a new Touch ID power button, allowing for a bigger screen like the iPhone 10. And with that, of course, upgraded hardware like cameras instead of the super old parts from the iPhone 8, which gets absolutely smoked even by the cheaper Pixel 4a, which has already been replaced. And with that, a full spec upgrade across the board was expected to finally make it competitive. And since it's gonna be around for a long time, it could include MagSafe, which has been a game changer in the newer phones. Of course, it would still have an LCD display and use budget components to be priced at $399. And looking like, a, say, a smaller iPhone XR, that would be enough to pull people away from Android and get them to upgrade from older iPhones. But nope, Dylan DKT recently updated a suite from last year on the iPhone SE, giving us the bad news that this model has been pushed back until 2024. I can't believe it, 2024. This means that this upcoming SE will feature the same size that we've had for eight years now, and with most of the components being from the iPhone 8. Now sure, the processor will be updated to the A15 Bionic, which is crazy for a $399 phone, but honestly, even the A13 is still more than powerful enough for everybody that is buying it. Now this CPU will help with battery life a bit, which is good since the current SE only lasted three hours and 38 minutes in Mr. Who's the Boss's latest test, where even the 13 mini lasted almost twice as long. But can it really help enough? Since the biggest headline feature, the addition of 5G, sucks more power than the current LTE, and the battery will likely stay exactly the same, the tiny one, whereas current competitors, like the budget Pixel, have batteries over twice the size. To me, this just proves that Apple is only making this change to market the buzzword 5G for those people that still wanna keep Touch ID in the classic design that they're used to, and to stop using the A13 and put the A15 chip into more products, which does streamline and it reduces costs, which will be very important for the new surprise product that will be launched, which will likely take the A14 processor from the next product that's gonna be launched that we're talking about, that is the iPad Air, 5, which really needs an update. Coming into India with two new model numbers, the Air 5 will replace the 4, which has aged super fast, even though it is the first non-pro iPad to use the square edge design. Even when it launched, we told people to consider buying an old 2018 iPad Pro instead for not much more because of everything extra that it offers, like 120Hz ProMotion, higher brightness, quad speaker systems, and more. And once the new M1 iPad Pros came out, the difference in features and performance was even bigger with the 8-core processor and graphics, much faster storage, Thunderbolt 4, and having the better cameras and mics, the center stage feature, double the storage, storage and so much more for only a $200 price difference. And if that wasn't bad enough, soon after that, Apple updated their other iPads, which also now include the center stage cameras, even for the $329 budget iPad. And the Mini 6 finally got the same new redesign, but one up the air with better cameras, mics, a flash, along with the new A15 processor for $100 less. And at this point, the only reason to buy the Air is if you absolutely have to have a new design iPad with a big screen 
screen and it has to be at that price point and brand new instead of used because other than that, right now, you'd be better off with pretty much any other iPad. So how is Apple going to fix this? Well, first off, it is pretty obvious that it will get the A15 just like the SE and with that 5G support to keep up with the pack. According to Maka Takara, the new Air will also get the 12 megapixel center stage camera with quad LED true tone flash, which is also a given since the cheaper mini has this. Now what's not expected but could come are quad speakers instead of the current dual speakers hidden behind four grills. And Maka Takara also mentioned that it could be getting the same LiDAR and dual camera set up as the pro models have. All of this is really required to make it competitive and worth it. Now personally, I would like it to come with more than 64 gigabytes of storage and then having a hefty price upgrade to get to 256, but this isn't really likely knowing Apple. And unfortunately, the other leaks that we've saw, like the OLED display that Digitimes claimed would come in early 2022 have been delayed, and this iPad will stick to the same LCD screen with limited contrast and brightness. So what about the third and final new product that was registered and is now being tested in India with the model numbers A257 and A2761? Well, reports are that this is another iPad and some people were speculating that it could be a different size of the air, but that makes no sense. And others said it could be finally the mini LED version of the 11 inch iPad, but that also doesn't make a lot of sense because you would have to do a price hike just like the 12.9 inch iPad had. And because we already have info that these will be launching in the fall with the M2 processors. The verdict seems to be that this surprise iPad is a replacement for the ninth generation iPad that launched less than five months ago. But how the heck is this possible? Why would Apple replace a perfectly good iPad that just came out only six months later? Well, there could be a few reasons. First off, Apple has actually done this before, but it has been about 10 years. In 2012, they launched the third generation iPad in the spring, and then just half a year later, that same year, they replaced it with the iPad 4, which made a lot of people upset. This iPad looked identical, but packed more powerful hardware like the A6X processor, significantly better front cameras, and the two most important features being connectivity, both wired and wireless. The fourth gen iPad got Air play and a worldwide 4G modem, which was a big deal. And with that, of course, we are expecting this updated iPad, the budget one, to also feature 5G. Now, personally, I don't think that this is a big enough deal at all, and certainly not enough to make it worth replacing an iPad just six months later, so there has to be more. The other feature that the fourth gen got was the lightning port, finally getting rid of the 30 pin connector. And if we look at what's happening now, Apple is finally close to moving all the way over to USB type C with this being the last iPad to have lightning and with pressure from Europe and rumors that the iPhone will start getting rid of it. I would love to see Apple finish the job and bring USB type C to this iPad. With that said, if this is the case, then the budget iPad will also get the redesigned treatment and have a modern clean look with a likely price increase to $399. Well, as we know, Apple has been on a TikTok cycle for many years now with their budget iPads, upgrading them every single year with one update being internal like processor updates and then the following year making a physical change like going from a 9.7 inch design to the current 10.2 inch. With that long-standing trend, this past September, Apple should have kept the A12 SoC and instead upgraded the design to the 10.5 inch body from the Air 3, but they did didn't, and for the first time, they broke that trend and instead gave us the A13, which nobody really asked for, the better front cameras, and finally 64 gigabytes of storage. All of those leaks of Apple finally ditching their last non-laminated display had merit though, and we personally believe that everything was pushed back just like the OLED iPad and the redesigned iPhone SE. There are just too many parts shortages and price hikes going on right now, so it makes sense for them to consult 
consolidate parts and wait on such big changes. So even though I would love a full redesign for the budget iPad, this most likely isn't it. With that said, even though the difference from 10.2 inches to 10.5 isn't big, having that high quality laminated display is going to be a significant improvement with better brightness and much less reflections with better Apple Pencil performance as well. And with that, the 10th gen iPad can take the A14 chip from the Air and same with the 5G connectivity included to become a weird but worthwhile update. So why would Apple do this just six months after launching the 9th generation iPad? Well, the last few years, Apple's been launching iPad Pros in the early spring and budget iPads close to the iPhone time or exactly the same time. But as I mentioned, this year, we are expecting the new iPad Pros to come out in the fall along with a ton of other Apple products. So this might just be why they are flipping the budget iPad to come in the springtime, just like they used to a few years ago, and then the iPad Pros in the fall. If you wanna see our full 2020 22 spring launch event, check out that video right over there and click above to subscribe to help us reach our goal of 1 million subscribers. This has been Max and I will see you in the next video.